Hey guys, welcome to episode eight of Pineapple Knits. I'm Marina, and you can find me on Instagram and Ravelry at Pineapple Yarn, and you can visit my hand-dyed yarn company at pineappleyarn.com. So I hope you guys are having a great week this week. We are having a beautiful sunny day here in central Indiana, and those are my favorite days if you hadn't gathered because I talk about the weather every time this podcast is recorded. Um, thank you so much for joining me today. I really appreciate you coming back and spending some time with me. And if this is your first time joining me, welcome. I'm so glad that you chose to spend some time with me today, and I hope that you enjoy this podcast. Um, normally, I talk about knitting, other crafts here on the podcast, um, always the weather because I'm turning in my grandmother. And uh, yeah, so I also talk a lot about yarn because I am obsessed with yarn. <laughs> so let's get on to the episode. Right now I am actually drinking coffee like I was last week because I have been dyeing up a ton of yarn this week. I've been working really hard and um, said to treat myself to some coffee and um, glad I am. <laughs> So I'm really excited because I actually have two finished objects to share with you this week. The first one is my Evil Queen socks. These were knit with uh, a colorway called the Evil Queen by Vol & Vine Yarns. It is beautiful purple with red accents. Um, I actually knit these for one of my daughters who loves purple. Um, the pattern is just a vanilla sock pattern. It's my standard pattern that I normally use. So I used 56 six stitches around. I also uh, knit all the way down. Or I shouldn't say all the way down. I actually started a t with a toe up. So let me just go ahead and show you. I started with, I believe it's called Judy's Magic Cast On at the toe increased every other row, went up, just knit up, and instead of inserting the heel while I was knitting up, I basically just knit a tube and then do an afterthought heel. And let me go ahead and show you the results of that heel. So she does an amazing afterthought heel tutorial. It leaves no gap or hole here. And if you have done afterthought heels before, you will know that it, you can, like the traditional afterthought heels, I guess, you can tend to get a hole right here. So this doesn't, it's really great. And then I just did a one by one rib on top. Um, things I liked about the sock, I love the colorway. I, I don't know if you can see, let me show you a close up one more time. This is actually on a gold Stellina base. So it's gold sparkly, it's really pretty. Um, I am pleased with how the sock turned out. I think the heels look really neat with this pattern here. Um, things that I could do better with next time. Um, I usually make my kids' socks a little bit larger than needed. This one is actually on my size sock blocker, so I made it quite a bit larger than I needed. I blocked out pretty large. Um, no, I don't have huge feet, so um, she probably is a per well approaching my size, but um, yeah, I probably could do a little better with that. Maybe not so big next time, but that's okay. She'll grow into it, and um, I have been waiting to show you guys on the podcast before she wears them, so she will be really excited that she can finally wear them. <laughs> So the second uh, finished object that I want to show you is my Wondrous Watch Shawl. I finally finished it. I'm so excited. It's probably been, gosh, seven, eight? No. This is my eighth episode, so it's maybe been six weeks that I've been working on it. And I'm so pleased with how it turned out. I think it is a very unique, very unusual shape. Um, it was interesting. I don't feel like it took that long. So I'm just going, I, I would have worn it today, but it is way too hot to wear it. So 
I put it on my dress form here and I'll just um, go through it. I know I've gone through it on every single episode, but uh, for some of you maybe who are new or have missed um, some of the previous episodes, I'll just run through really quick and um, talk about it a little. So um, this was knit with all of my hand dyed yarns, pineapple yarn. This, it was knit in um, several different um, shapes and color blocks. You started off by um, knitting this. This is a kind of a teardrop shape and this is in my colorway bubble gum. And then what you did is you knit two long triangles. It's, we started off with the um, red and then this speckle color. The uh, speckle is called Waikiki. This is Heartbreaker. And then it's topped off with this really pretty blue saturated, which is cobalt. Then um, these two are continued, I guess, um, you continue to knit on these with the um, neon yellow. This is Saturn. And it has a really nice garter rib um, accent. And then while you're decreasing on this, at the very top is another triangle of cobalt. And so this does end up being a triangular shawl. Um, it's actually quite wide. It's probably, I think I measured it. Yeah, I measured it when I was blocking it to make sure it was symmetrical. And it was, I think, 84 inches across, which is a pretty large shawl. Um, so at the very end, what you do is you pick up the outside edges of the, um, of the triangle and you knit these squiggles on. This is, I don't think I have this colorway in the shop. This might have been something I was just um, trying out. It's kind of a bright mint color, but these are just what make the shawl. I mean, this is why I knit this shawl was for these. Um, I really, really like them. I think it adds so much to the shawl. They're also on the other side. And then at the very end, this is just uh, stitched on this piece in between the two triangles. I also like how it doesn't extend all the way across. So um, on both sides, the um, red section actually has, if you can see, these little flaps, which is great. And um, so there's just a lot of shapes and texture in this shawl. I really, really like it. And um, so yeah, the things I liked about this shawl, it was a great knit. Um, it wasn't completely garter stitch. This is um, had a little bit of stockinette with just a rib in it. So it kind of broke up the monotony of a garter stitch. I also liked all the shapes that are put together. I liked the squiggles, which was a new, um, the stacked, I guess, increases was a new technique for me. So um, that was interesting trying to figure that out. Um, the things that I would maybe do differently next time, something, an area that I need to work on, I definitely need to work on stacked stitches. <laughs> um, they, I know I mentioned this maybe last episode, they are loose. I, I feel like they're loose. I don't know if you are doing an increase like this, how you can maneuver your needles when you have so many loops around the needles, when you have so many stitches on the needles. And so um, after experimenting for a little bit, I felt like I had to just keep them loose in order to be able to move my needles. Um, there may be a better way to do this. But the end result of this shawl is it's really, really fun. It's so colorful. And um, because of its size, I feel like you can wear it several different ways. So I hope to um, take some pictures of this eventually or soon. I hope to take some pictures of it really soon. And maybe I'll share them with you because I was kind of experimenting with different ways to wear it. And yeah, I had a really good time with that. So. Yay, I'm so excited to be done with it and to be able to wear it. And I'm excited to move on to new projects too. So now for my works in progress, I'm actually right now working on a test knit. Unfortunately, it's a secret test knit, so I can't show you until it's finished and until the pattern's released. 
but I've been having a really great time with it. It is, um, I'm sure it's fine to tell you, it's a sweater. It's a child size sweater. And um, I finished the yoke. It's a top down sweater. Finished the yoke. Um, I had knit, last night I had finished knitting half the body. I was so excited about it. And then um, upon looking at it, realized I had used a needle size too large. I measured my gauge and it was way too large and the actual body of the sweater could have fit me. So I started off this morning by frogging the entire body of my sweater. I still have the yoke, which is great, <laughs> but uh, I feel like now I've, I've got, that was two or three days worth of work. So my knitting time's limited. It's, oh, it's so painful to do that, but it has to be done if it's going to look right. Um, you know, the benefits are that uh, it, it was a little cumbersome or, you know, I was fidgeting while knitting it because I was using, I think a, it may have been a 40 inch um, circular needle. And so I was basically having to magic loop it, which was, I just like to, when I have a body of a sweater, I like to knit and knit and knit when it's socking up, just knit all the way around. It's just so much easier and it's faster. And um, so I purchased a needle that is smaller <laughs> and, or the cord is shorter and then also the appropriate size. Um, it is, I don't think I've done that before, but um, the issue is, is that I knit looser than most patterns call for. So I usually have to go down a needle size. And this time I just, I guess I was just reading the pattern, used the needle and didn't think. Um, my swatch came out well, so hopefully I won't have any issues once I get the needle. But that's for the test knit. I also have been working a bit on my other pair of socks. This is a pair of socks I've been working on for a little bit. It is on a yarn by Republic of Wool called Grand Scheme. I think it's so beautiful. I ordered this in a uh, pre-order and I was so excited to get it. It has beautiful golds, olive, um, like a pale aqua, pink, and of course speckles, and they're, so, they're pretty subtle speckles, I would say. And then I actually knit the entire sock, almost, almost the entire sock. I just started on the rib on top. And so what I'm doing with this sock is I will be knitting tubes for these socks as well and I will probably be gifting them around Christmas time. And so I will do, be doing an afterthought heel on these. And once I know, or I guess decide, I have a couple of ideas of people I'd like to gift these to. But once I decide, I can insert the heel based on their foot size. So hopefully this will cut down on some gift knitting close to Christmas because it just gets so crazy. And I want to make sure that I'm not just doing gift knits because I'm obliged or, um, you know, rushing around to do them. I want to enjoy knitting and not just because I feel like I have to. I'm sure you guys understand that. But I love the um, kind of the micro stripes that are being created in the sock. I think it's so pretty. So yeah, I'm almost done with this one and then I just have the next one. So that is all I'm currently working on right now. I am looking to the future. I'm looking at the beekeeper cardigan, the four day knit along. I've been talking about this for several weeks. It is actually starting July 1st. So I need to look at my calendar and figure out the days that are going to work out for me. Um, I'm thinking that I might be reserving maybe two weekends. So doing like a Saturday and a Sunday, 
Um, I don't think you have to do consecutive days, which will work out best for me. Um, so I think I'm going to do that is do like two consecutive weekends and just knock out as much as I can. And hopefully I will, I'm really challenging myself to finish that sweater in four days, but I don't know. I don't know if it's going to work out. Um, I need to be really positive though. Mind over matter, right? Um, I think it's a really cool challenge. And if you would like to join me and I'm not doing the knit along, but I'm not hosting it. I'm just a participant. But if you'd like more information, you can um, look it up on, I know she's a Facebook group, but Marie with all of knits on Instagram is where you can find more information. And I purchased the pattern on Ravelry. So you can also most likely search for it there. So I, as because I just don't have enough to do, um, I've been thinking of something that has interested me for a really long time. And I think it might be the time in my life that I'm gonna give this a go. Um, many years ago, and I, and I mean many years ago, like when I was very young, um, I, watched a segment on Sesame Street about spinning and um, if you guys of a certain age might remember uh, like the old old school Sesame Street there was a segment where a woman uh, who raised sheep she sheared a sheep she prepared the wool for spinning um, she spun the wool and actually knit the yarn into a sweater um, I used to be kind of fascinated by this when I was a kid. I remember taking my bike outside and turning it upside down and trying to figure out if I could make the tire into a spinning wheel. I didn't really realize that the actual wheel part had the yarn didn't touch the wheel. So that was kind of a fail, but um, <laughs> I've always been interested in spinning yarn. And I never have because it has been uh, fairly cost prohibitive. And then also um, they tend to take up a lot of space. So I don't know what made me start thinking about this again. The last time I visited this idea of spinning um, was when we lived in Hawaii and we lived in a very small small home um, we definitely did not have enough space and I feel like there might be some more options on the market now which would be more appropriate and so I kind of wanted to throw this out if you guys have any um, first-hand knowledge or any advice I would love if you would just write it in a comment below or contact me um, either via Instagram or on my website, pineappleyarn.com. I would love to hear your ideas about this. So I just started researching spinning wheels again. And I found one by, I believe it's Spinology, and it is called the Polywog Wheel. It is a, I believe it's marketed to, um, either children or beginners. It's a very small wheel. It is modern looking, which was one of my criteria. I definitely wanted a modern looking wheel. Um, it's quite small. It um, is like a double treadle. I think it's a toe treadle, so it's not difficult to use. Um, and I'm really looking at it because it is in the grand scheme of uh, spinning wheels it's actually quite inexpensive um, I think with I can't remember if it's with accessories or without I believe it's around $3.99 so if you have any first-hand knowledge or experience with the polywog wheel or anything by the company I would really appreciate if you could reach out to me and just kind of give me your two cents about it um, I'm not really interested with anything that has larger bobbins. I think a four ounce bobbin or four ounce bobbins would be fine with me. I'm interested in spinning finer yarns. Um, I don't really see myself spinning like art yarn or bulky yarn. And so I think four ounce bobbins would be fine. Um, it has, I believe it has Lazy Kate on it. Um, 
it's really quite lightweight. Um, so anyway, that's just an idea. I know eventually I will get a spinning wheel because it has been um, an interest of mine for a really long time. And considering I I love fiber, I love yarn so much, and this kind of just seems like the natural next step for me. And um, so I guess while I am considering and like kind of trying to figure out what wheel to get, I should probably start saving my money. <laughs> so I actually have the funds to get one. Um, but I'm sure, you know, I'm sure some of you will probably say you need to try out wheels. Um, that's something I definitely need to research. I don't know of any dealer around the area. I'm sure there is here in Indiana. I'm in central Indiana. I'm sure there is a dealer somewhere near here, I would think. Uh, the problem is, is that I have limited time. I don't, I can't just leave all of my children and go try out spinning wheels. So <laughs> I'm also thinking, the reason I was thinking of the polywog is because I know at least one of my children would really, really enjoy uh, spinning with it and trying it out. And so it might be fun for them to have something that is close to their size that would that they could try it out. Um, I'm not large either. I'm actually very petite, so I'm not really concerned with the size it being too small. So just some thoughts of another hobby that I might take up, and um, yeah, I'd love to hear your feedback on it. So I mentioned that I was dyeing yarn a lot this week. Um, I went to my website and I was just kind of browsing through it for any glitches, um, which I should probably do more often. And I noticed that it's just, it's pretty empty. I mean, if I was going to go to my shop and look for something to purchase, I would want more of a selection. So I've been working really hard trying to dye up more yarn and have more stock in the shop. So let me show you some of the colorways that I dyed up and that are actually dry. So most of these I have dyed in the past. I have been trying to refine my recipes and have them a little more cohesive. Um, so let me show you the, um, I'm just gonna run through these really quickly. So I think this is so beautiful. This is called Sunkissed. It has a beautiful, um, almost like a Tiffany blue. I know it's reading really bright here. It's like a bright Tiffany blue, a really pretty like neon coral and a neon yellow. And it has um, some speckles. This is actually, I don't know if you can see it. This is on my gold Nani twist base, which is gold Stellina. And this is a really beautiful, bright, sunny colorway. I should mention too that I will have these, most of these will be on my Lani base, which is my standard sock base, and then also my gold Nani twist base, which is a gold Stellina base. So the next one I wanna show you is called Anchors Up. It has some really pretty pinks, blues, greens with um, speckles. I think maybe you can see the um, gold Stellina in that. So this is also an old favorite. And then one of the first colorways that I dyed, um, I actually have a shawl knitted out of this, so I should uh, maybe bring it sometime. But this is called Pineapple Flower, and it is a really, really pretty blend of um, a sage green, kind of a bright yellow green, and then also a peach with some really beautiful complementary speckles in it. Um, I have, when I lived in Hawaii, I actually grew some pineapples in my backyard and I have, I took some photos of them and this matches exactly. So this is definitely one of my favorites. It's a beautiful, um, beautiful colorway and um, yeah, I'll have this on the Gold Stellina base. I actually have it just on the Nani base as, or the Lani base as well. And then the last one that I wanna show you, I um, kind of messed up. 
<laughs> when I'm saying that I want to refine my recipes, it's because sometimes, you know, if you're making something really often, I guess you don't have to write everything down. It's just intuitive. You just remember things. Um, I, uh, um, for those of you who don't know, when I moved here from Hawaii, I took quite a long hiatus. I had to because it was, in essence, an overseas move. And then also we were busy with home renovations. And then I actually was pregnant and had a child in all of that time. So I needed a bit of a break. Um, through my pregnancy, I actually was yarn averse. I don't know why, because the last, the previous pregnancy, I bought all the yarn. So um, it's just the way it is. But anyway, so now that I'm started up again, I am trying to just go through my recipes and play with them a little bit, refine them, and actually write down instructions that are important. <laughs> but anyway, so this is one of the um, colorways that I, it just kind of had a mind of its own, which is, um, it's a beautiful mistake, right? I mean, this is so pretty. This is on my Lani sock base, and then this one is on my, um, Gold Nani Twist, which is a gold Stellina base. These have really pretty shades of kind of like a melon and pink and a little bit brighter orange down there. I think that's really pretty. Anyway, I'm not sure what I'm gonna call these yet. Um, I usually have my one-off colorways there called End of the Day, where I take all of my old dye and throw it on some yarn and see what happens. They're usually outstanding, absolutely beautiful. Um, this isn't really, I didn't use my old dye for this or my leftover dye. So um, I do know how I created this though and I might just make this into a new colorway because I think it is so pretty. Um, and I have colorways now in stock in the shop that would be so pretty with this like in a shawl it would make a beautiful pair of socks as well so those are the colorways that I actually brought with me today I have a ton of other yarn that's drying right now so I'm excited to work on that um, speaking of shop news actually I want to thank you all for the wonderful update I had on Friday um, I appreciate all of your purchases so much they really, it really, really means so much to me. And um, yarn makes me so happy and knitting. And so that's kind of my, in my mind when I am dyeing yarn and when I'm packaging it, I'm just thinking of making you guys happy too and just bringing a little bit of color and joy into your lives. So thank you so much for giving me the opportunity to do that. It really means so much. And I have some really exciting things planned for next Friday's shop update. Um, I think I'm going to be doing shop updates every other Friday. It just, for right now, it seems like that's going to work best uh, with my schedule. So I will be having a shop update next Friday. Uh, not tomorrow, but next Friday. I believe that is July 6th at 8 p.m. Eastern Time. Um, but I have a really pretty fabric that I purchased. It is so beautiful. It's not as bright as the colors that I normally dye with or that I have as project bags, but it's a beautiful mermaid fabric. It has metallic accents on it and some whimsical um, kind of sketched mermaids. So I, I, have, I will have that in pink and like an aqua color and it will have matching progress keepers or charms. Um, I also dyed yarn to match the bags. It is so beautiful. I'm really proud of myself for putting together these kits because they are so beautiful. So those will be, I'll preview those next week um, on the podcast and also preview some other yarns that will be in the shop. But um, I think that 
that's all I have this week. So please remember if you have any advice with the spinning wheel situation, leave me a comment below. I would so appreciate you just um, kind of guiding me with this right now. And thank you again for joining me this week. I really appreciate it. If you liked this podcast or this episode, just uh, give me a thumbs up and subscribe to it. So until next week, I hope you have an awesome day. Bye, guys. Thank you.